The H. L. Hunley was not a vessel with a good reputation. It had already claimed the lives of two of its crews when it set out to make history by sinking the Union ship, the Housatonic, that blockaded Charleston Harbor during the American Civil War. It would succeed in its mission, but the H. L. Hunley would never return, leading to a mystery that endures to this day. It was clear that the H. L. Hunley had gone down for a third time, but the enduring question remained, why? Hello, and welcome to the Shipwreck Archive. Thank you. Would you happen to have the H. L. Hunley goes down for a third time? Here we are. Enjoy! The crew of the Union steamship, the Housatonic, were alert and watchful. The Confederate Navy was known to have torpedo boats in the area of the Charleston Bay, and they had used them. The Housatonic was part of a blockade operation that had been strangling the South's ability to transport trade goods or supplies for most of the Civil War, and everyone knew how desperate the South was to break the blockade and release the North's control over their ports. Wealthy citizens of Charleston had placed bounties on Union ships, giving enterprising inventors a motivation to try to find a solution to the Union's superior naval power. Torpedo boats were low profile and hard to spot, and the damage that the first torpedo boat, the CSS David, had done to the USS New Ironsides was enough to make any blockade ship concerned about encountering a torpedo. Worse, when questioned, deserting Confederate soldiers and sailors were telling of a new ship that had been brought into Charleston by train. It was a ship equipped with torpedoes, but it was not like the David, which was only low profile. This was a ship that was supposed to travel under the water. Though they did not know its name, the men on the Housatonic were not only on the lookout for the David, they were now also on the lookout for the H. L. Hunley. The idea of a submarine being used to break a blockade was not new. The first combat submarine ever invented, the Turtle, had been created by David Bushnell with the intent of breaking the British blockade of Boston. Unfortunately, with a single man as the only propulsion for the craft, the turtle was never able to muster enough speed and power with which to fight the tides and make a successful attack. The inventor of the H.L. Hunley had, however, thought of this. Unlike the turtle's barrel-like shape, the H.L. Hunley had taken on the long cigar shape of the torpedo boats that the South had already built and used with success. This enabled it to hold up to nine men, with seven of them in charge of using the hand crank levers to propel the vessel. This was enough to allow the vessel to travel about three and a half miles per hour, fast enough to sneak up on an enemy vessel that was at anchor. Horace Lawson Hunley, former state legislator of Louisiana, and his partner, James McClintock, had built several submarines. His first attempt, near the start of the war, was built in his home city of New Orleans. When the Union forces captured New Orleans, Hunley had destroyed his ship rather than allowing it to fall into enemy hands. His second ship, the American Diver, was built in Alabama, but had sunk while under tow. His third attempt, The vessel that bore his own name had a successful test run and was immediately transported to where it seemed the most needed, Charleston, South Carolina. It did not seem to be common knowledge, either among the Union forces or the Confederate deserters, that the American diver had sunk. When the H.L. Hunley was brought into the besieged city, Rumors quickly began to spread that the American diver had come and was to be a secret weapon against the blockade. The Union fleet, already on edge because of the torpedo ships that occasionally slipped out to attack them, now 
was extra alert against this new threat. Things were not going well for the H.L. Hundley, however. Though the initial test run of the vessel had gone well, things went less smoothly once the vessel was in Charleston. General Beauregard, the man in charge of the defense of Charleston, was desperate to use the new weapon in his arsenal immediately. Not waiting for the original crew from Mobile or Horace Hunley, Beauregard seized the vessel and prepared it for its first combat mission. The H.L. Hunley was just about to head out on its first mission when disaster struck. Though there is some disagreement about what exactly happened, whether another ship's wake flooded her unexpectedly, or if it had become tangled in another ship's mooring line, what is known is that the open hatches of the H.L. Hunley soon were filled with water, and she sank without even leaving the dock. Thanks to the open hatches, three of the crew were able to escape, but five other members of the crew went down with the ship and were drowned. It would take several weeks to refloat the H.L. Hunley. And in that time, Horace Hunley arrived in Charleston and took back control of his vessel. General Beauregard seemed to be willing to admit that his men did not know how to handle it. Horace Hunley also brought the crew from Mobile to help operate it with him. Almost a month and a half after the H.L. Hunley had sank in a manner not intended, Horace Hunley declared that he would give a demonstration of his vessel in a test dive. Once more, the H.L. Hunley disappeared beneath the waves, and, once again, it failed to surface. Though they searched for the vessel, it was not until almost a month later that they found it with its bow stuck in the mud at the bottom of the harbor. Once more, the H.L. Hunley was hoisted up and recovered. On opening the submarine, they found that the submarine had filled with water due to a ballast tank valve that had been left open, killing all on board, something that seemed to have happened quickly. Now that the H.L. Hunley had killed 13 men, including her inventor, there was a lot more reluctance to attempt any further experiments. General Beauregard, who had once been so optimistic about the submarine as a boost for the morale of his men, now saw it had the power to do the opposite as well. The men who were now stationed on her, all volunteers, had to be promised that they would not be forced to dive on her. General Beauregard was beginning to think it might be time to give up on the entire plan. There were many men on both sides of the war, however, who considered that the previous two sinkings had been due to mismanagement of the vessel and not due to a flaw in the submarine. Lieutenant Dixon was one of the men who firmly believed in the viability of the H.L. Hunley to carry out an attack. He approached General Beauregard with a plan. The northern ships had been ordered by Rear Admiral Dargren to move into shallow water where a ship would not be able to dive under them and hang chains over their sides as soon as he had heard about the possibility of an enemy submarine in the waters. With these measures, Lieutenant Dixon proposed that the best course of action would be a 16-foot spar with a torpedo at the end attached to the bow of the H.L. Hundley. It did seem like their best chance, and so even though he was not entirely certain of the safety of the H.L. Hunley, General Beauregard agreed. The target of their expedition, being the Housatonic, was a matter of less debate. She was a newer ship and a powerful one. If they were going to target a ship with a stealth attack, it made sense to damage or sink one of the Union's best. With everything in place, they waited for a calm night on which to attack. At approximately 8.45 p.m., the officer of the watch, acting Master Crosby, spotted something in the water about 100 yards from their ship and heading in their direction. 
He thought it had the appearance of a plank, but its direct path in their direction alarmed the alert crew. In the two minutes from when they saw the object in the water to it coming alongside of them, the Houstonic slipped her chain, they backed her engine, and all of her men were called to quarters with the intention of evading whatever this strangely acting object was. The H.L. Hunley was too fast, however. The torpedo struck the starboard of the ship right in line with the ship's magazine, creating an explosion that almost immediately sank the ship. The Housatonic was able to launch two of their boats while the ship was sinking, and the men who were not able to fit in them instead climbed into the rigging and waited until a nearby ship was able to rescue them. The loss of life, despite the Housatonic sinking in mere minutes, was surprisingly low, with only five men losing their lives out of a crew of 155. Many more were injured, however, including the captain who was in too rough shape to even make his report as to what had happened to his ship initially. When a court of inquiry was created to look into the matter, they could find no fault with the actions of anyone on board of the Housatonic, with everyone having acted according to their orders and the crew having remained calm in spite of the surprise attack they had endured. It was not only the Housatonic that had slipped beneath the waves at night, however. No one on either side was able to account for the whereabouts of the H.L. Hunley. It was initially supposed by Captain Gray, the Confederate captain in charge of torpedoes, that due to the placement of the torpedo on her bow, the H.L. Hunley might have gone into the hole in the side of the Housatonic accidentally, gotten stuck, and gone down with the very ship that they had sank. Lieutenant Churchill of the United States Navy was sent out to inspect the sunken Housatonic, and though he looked for what they still supposed to be a torpedo boat, he did not find the wreck of one anywhere near the Housatonic. Even after dragging the bottom of the harbor for 500 yards around the wreck, there is a report that 45 minutes later, a Union soldier saw a blue light in the water, and if this is true, it might be the last sighting of the H.L. Hunley. The only thing that is known is that Lieutenant Dixon and all of his men, as well as the first submarine to ever sink an enemy vessel, all disappeared for over 100 years. The actual discovery of the H.L. Hunley is a matter of some controversy. Underwater archaeologist Dr. E. Lee Spence has stated that he found the sunken submarine in the 1970s, and that he has evidence to prove it, including the permits he applied for from the government regarding its salvage, and its registration on the National Register for Historic Places, using the location that he had provided in 1978. Dr. E. Lee Spence did not go public with his discovery, however. In 1995, NUMA, an underwater archaeology and exploration group funded by author Clive Cussler announced publicly that they had discovered the H.L. Hundley, causing a wave of publicity for the submarine that had almost been forgotten. Dr. E. Lee Spence signed his rights to the wreck over to the South Carolina government, and NUMA disclosed the location of their find officially, allowing restoration and preservation work to begin. Both sides still claimed to be the first finders of the wreck, however, and this sparked multiple inconclusive lawsuits between Dr. Ely Spence and Clive Cussler, both claiming to have been injured financially by the other's claims of discovery. As it now stands, all lawsuits have either been dismissed or dropped, and there does not seem to be any further legal actions being taken. As for the H.L. Hundley, she proved to have been buried under silt at the bottom of the Charleston Harbor, about 100 yards from where the Housatonic found her final rest. It was decided that for any work to be done to discover her secrets, and what had happened to her after her historic sinking of the Housatonic, they were going to need to raise her from the constantly shifting silt of the Charleston Harbor. In 2000, the Hunley was gently lifted from the bottom of the sea 
and placed in a giant tank full of cold, fresh water so that they could begin to look inside of her. When the H.L. Hunley had sank, First Engineer Tome of the Confederate Navy had written that she was a coffin for Lieutenant Dixon and his men. Now that the H.L. Hunley was able to be opened again, they found the remains of her crew still at their stations, having made no apparent effort to save themselves. A hidden mechanism in the keel of the vessel that was intended as a failsafe to help the crew escape in case of emergency had never been touched. The bodies were removed from the submarine, and they were buried next to the graves of the other men who had lost their lives to the H.L. Hunley's previous sinkings over a hundred years before. The mystery of what happened to the H.L. Hunley remains, however. How did she join the Housatonic at the bottom of the harbor just after her successful mission? The eerie way that the men were still at their stations with no signs of struggle stirs the imagination. There is no shortage of theories. In 2017, researchers at Duke University put forward the idea that the crew had fallen victim to blast lung, a shockwave from the torpedo that would have caused the rupture of the blood vessels in the men's lungs. Though this seems like a likely explanation, without conclusive evidence, there are still other possibilities. The weather deteriorated as the night progressed, and it is possible that the men powering the H.L. Hunley simply were not strong enough to return to the shore against the waves. Another popular theory is that the men underestimated how much oxygen they required and that the reason for their lack of struggle was that they had simply slowly passed out from air deprivation at their stations. Yet more theories include the idea that the ship that came to rescue the survivors of the sinking Housatonic actually struck the submarine and sank it. With its lengthy stay at the bottom of Charleston Harbor, it is difficult to tell what is the damage of time and what is the damage of the night of the sinking. It is possible that the fate of the H.L. Hunley might never be conclusively answered. What is known for certain is that the H.L. Hunley has the distinction of being the first submarine to ever sink an enemy vessel something that would not occur again until World War I. The ship that took three crews to the bottom with it would not discourage people of thinking of a future of underwater combat. Indeed, it would only show that it was an opportunity for a small ship to have a very large impact. For more first-hand accounts and documents associated with the sinking of the Housatonic and the H.L. Hunley, please see the history.navy.mil collection of documents associated with the event and our sources below. Thank you for listening. Thank you for visiting the Shipwreck Archives. See you soon.